You know how Brian Johnson has been measuring his erections at night? No, but continue. Can we send satellites into orbit that project light down and then they arrange in a superposition that is a QR code? I'm worried that when me and my wife have kids, we're not going to be able to rent them out at a good price. And all of our like our security guards are literally just mobs. <laughs> what is everyone doing writing fucking essays on Twitter? Like, you did it, Paul. You're a billionaire. If we're going to be doing yeah. essays, it should be more like Unabomber, like, like manifestos. <laughs> Planting drugs on your competition's CEO, that should be a service, too. We, I, there's a couple thousand dudes in San Francisco that'll do that for about 20 bucks. Let's blow up the internet. From the basement to the higher net. Scroll and tap in there, we ain't done yet. Let's blow up the internet. You have been blowing up LinkedIn lately with some crazy startup posts. So I'm wearing this sweatshirt for my friend in your honor. So let's talk about some silly startups. Number one, I've got for you, okay? Awkward silence filler as a service. All right, so you're on a date. There's a little bit of awkward silence. And the AI detects that you and the girl are, are talking and then you're no longer talking. And after you know a certain amount of time of silence, it just starts playing elevator music, right? I think it could work. And also, you know this as somebody who pitches VCs and works with people like that, right? There's mm -hmm. some awkward silence in like VC meetings. You know, it would be nice if there's just some little elevator music. Yeah, you're a nice. little A little elevator music. But what, but what if, hear me out, okay? Like if it gets to a certain level of awkwardness, it calls you. And if fake calls Ooh. you, it's like it has a threshold meter of like, holy shit, like this is going the worst possible, like you need yes. to get out of here before the police are called. And it's yes. just like your mom calls you on Ooh. your phone and gets you the fuck out of there. So like any date with with me, like a girl, yes. it would just happen. Oh, like so when scared. we had lunch the, the, the last, yeah, yeah. Uh, like two weeks ago, and you yeah. told me that you were gonna like, you were gonna vote for Kamala Harris and Trump <laughs> at the same time. And I was like, I don't know how that's gonna work, Jason, but yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good idea. Also, it'd be nice if it connects to your Apple Watch and tracks your heart rate. Um, so it has to silence your heart rate. Maybe mm -hmm. we even, oh, want to know, be very interesting. You know how Brian Johnson has been measuring his erections at night? No, Just, but continue. Well, he has been. So he's he has this device that goes around and he's measuring his, you know, nighttime erections. Sure. And so... You know, some people, not me, obviously, but they get erections when they feel awkward. So that could be part of the service. You know what I'm saying? Right. But here, but hear me out. Not Maybe. me. I'm talking about like friends, like not. Yes. Me. Not, not either yeah. of us. But yeah. what if it also in like, say, you know, it could potentially just maybe encourage, like maybe there could be a conversation starter. Just if your bulge is big enough. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it like yeah. takes what could be a bad day to like, maybe this is party time. Yeah, so, like, I guess that's fair. You know what I mean? So like it could go either way. Maybe it can detect if someone's going to be like pretty, is going to be like really excited by that. Like maybe that'll be a conversation starter. So yeah, it could make it less that. awkward. We, we could, could save be. awkwardness, honestly. I think yeah. this is not, not only you said you're bringing bad ideas. This isn't a bad idea. This is a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hit me with one of your ideas. What you got? Okay. A political trading card game. This is an idea I came up with in the newsletter the other day. When I saw that Trump was releasing NFT trading cards, I was like, let's go all the way. Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! like <laughs> game, but for politics. All right, now hear me out. Border wall, defense card, okay? Grants you immunity against liberal propaganda for two turns, but the negative effects is Melania doesn't give you hand jobs, and you're going to have bad press for 48 hours. So every card, and then, but but again, we do this like politically uh, by uh, no no political swing. We've of got course. cards for both sides. We've got attack cards. We've got defense cards. Biden drops out of the race, and we spawn the demigod again. This is I'm not saying this is like morally conscious idea, but what would go harder than a political trading card game? And then fuck it, we make it NFTs. I mean, let's go all obviously. Way. Yeah, I, I love it, and I think. You know, Trump could have different attacks, like different insults, you know, like he creates a alliteration for your name, you know, you're just getting screwed like kooky Kamala, crooked Hillary, like oh, yeah. you're that's that's high level points. That's some like, 
yeah you know, uh, blue eyes white dragon type shit bro yeah brad like, summer just thrown on the field oh brad summer like, dude yeah insane you, that's a lot of got, points you get like 20 like pop stars immediately start working of yeah. like, or become your minions and they become yes. like attack demons so like you. kamala is like chief of you know she's on the field and then she's got like cardi b here like ben yes. stiller for some reason i don't really know why he's he's on that right. front but like those are two powerful people you know yeah so, white guys like for kamala it. is one card yeah. vcs I mean, that, for kamala that's a whole like yeah. dude this election is going to be won by memes like so oh, yeah. whoever has the better memes is going to win this election so i did drop out of college hence the poster here but there was one college class that was worth it and it was the most perfectly timed college class of all time which was social media during the elections taken <laughs> in the fall of the election nice. that was the best class i ever took and then i immediately dropped out after but point being, that class was amazing. And it, it was just like all Trump's social media meme campaign was like 50 times yeah. better than Hillary's. So he like obviously won. But no one knew how to take that into account. Dude, you might get a cabinet position. Have you ever thought about this? I've thought about it. I've actually been discussing with a certain military. Yeah, oh. About, you know, giving some talks around. You're like, you're like it's, it's Russia. They have uh, the best meme game. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm defecting I, to the, to the I'm not going to name names, but. I have been discussing with a certain military like, how to win I the did. social media war, dude. Memes are the modern propaganda. Every army, every political campaign is posting oh. memes, right? That's why oh. meme alerts is, is powerful. I see, dude, I see meme alerts. Like we're going to see some dot DARPA dot CIA subscribers. Like oh. bro, everybody's on that shit. You'll know Everybody. you've made it when someone at the state department is, is clicking your links in your newsletter every single yeah. week. And you have, and shout out to Beehive because you're going to see yeah. those analytics. Dude, I, I I have a subscriber from DARPA, which is mm, kind no. of weird. They invented the fucking internet, man. They did invent the internet. It's kind of weird. They might be straight. trying, you might get recruited. You might be like, imagine that the new, like uh, what was the Manhattan project is the meme Lord the project. Meme Lord project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, we should make a skit about that. <laughs> that I, uh, would be very funny. I, I think so. I was actually looking because when I was younger, I wanted to be a spy. And then I was like, I can't speak other languages. I can't run fast. It's not happening, you know, sure. but the other day I was just like looking at CIA jobs because, you know, I was bored. Why not? Sure. Like well, they hire like marketers. That's actually one of their like top listed things was like they hire propagandists and marketers and like PR people. Well, they, they got it. When they people. overthrow a, a, a regime, they have yeah. to have a PR team that comes in there and is like yeah. running the new state department campaigns for like yeah. whatever zealot Dude, that they put in. I power. would love to run Congo. I have no idea where it is, but I could run it. Like I know I, think I you could would do a great job. I, oh, I appreciate that. All right. Next business idea. Speaking of patriotic ideas, bald eagle rental. So July 4th, or maybe not even July 4th, maybe you're just a patriotic dude. You know, you got your American flag chubbies on, you know what I'm talking about, the American flag shorts, For and sure. you want the ultimate Instagram pick. And so you just pay, you know, maybe 500 bucks, maybe a hundred bucks, maybe less for bald eagle rental. There's also like there's Uber sharing. There's bald eagle sharing where you and your boys, you all go in. Like it wouldn't be bad just to spend 20 bucks each on a bald eagle for all of you guys to take a photo in like a one hour span. And it'd be like Uber where like the bald eagle driver, like the, the guy who, you know, operates the bald eagle or, or, you know, owns it. Like he drives around bringing the bald eagle. What do you think? We could have a, a secondary piece of income where we have bald eagles deliver news to people. Yes. So, so like maybe you're proposing to your to your soon to be wife yes. on the 4th of July. Yes. Rent the bald eagle. The bald eagle flies in, lands on your wife with a note. <laughs> yes. And then that's the marriage proposal. That is so American. I love it. That's how I proposed to my wife, actually. Was that. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How uh, well, I, it, it went great. It went great. Um, I do think my favorite form of message delivery is pigeons. Um, yes. I, I, I think it's the best form. Second best is probably, you know, when airplanes like write stuff in the sky, yes. I think I should do that more often instead of text I, messaging. I just, bet it's not that expensive. No, I feel like it's not either because the ROI, like I can't imagine that's high if you can't track the data. Although if you have a QR code in the sky, dude, we should put a QR code on the moon. That'd Bro, be amazing. Imagine that, like every nerd with it. And by the way, people looking at the, the moon through telescopes, they also have to have bread. Who's got money to yes, look at the moon? That's exactly that's what I was thinking about. Dude, if I had an astronomy software, or maybe you just Google Earth, I would put a QR code on the moon. Then you get all the nerds signed up. You're sure. Can we send satellites 
into orbit that project light down and then they arrange in a superposition that is a QR code. Is this possible? Well, sort of. Have you seen Reflect Orbital, actually? No, but please don't. Go so, on. all right, here, there's this really cool startup. You should watch their video at some point. I'll, I'll send it later. It gave me the chills. It's called Reflect Orbital. What it does, it's they send satellites in the sky and it rearranges, it, the light bounces off of it to send light to solar panels during the nighttime. So, Whoa. yeah, that way you could use solar panels all day and night rather than just during the day. Right. So I do think there is a QR code aspect here. Um, we, we'd probably have to like have them start a different service with it, but this is a total legit like VC funded back startup. Like it's, it's dope, hundred percent legit. So I think QR codes from space could definitely work. Um, I, I think we've got a good shot. All right. Business idea. What you got? Hit me. Oh, this one you're going to like, because this one's right up our alley. Uh, cringe ghostwriting as a service. Okay. I mean, I'm already doing that, dude. I, I, <laughs> I know, but I really think that we can expand down. Like what we found from the other week with uh, the guy who posted about his wife getting fucked by a CEO, that yeah. shit went hella viral. Yeah. So if you're like a sociopath and you don't care at all about your branding and you just want views, like we just spin up a service, you and I go in on this together and we just write the most insane, but it can't be like, it's not satire. Like yeah. that's, that's our specialty. We don't do any, it's just, it's, it's written like these other psychopath posts, but yeah. just with the pure view of getting as viral as humanly possible. I like that. So not satire, not funny, just purely pathetic. Yes. Like pathetic that guy writing you, as a service. Did you see the guy who posted that? Like, he's like, yeah, I watch porn on LinkedIn. Yeah. Did, you saw that guy? I'm yeah, like, I was this ghostwriter, this... dude. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. It sounded like you. I've read enough of your newsletter to be like, this has to be Jason. But like, we just, we go in, we get, and we don't even have to write them ourselves. We can just build a, a model based off of this, like pull together several yeah. hundred cringe LinkedIn posts, put in a bunch of topics. There was one that I saw, I made fun of, this was my most controversial newsletter I ever wrote, which was about a guy who posted that his baby that was in the ICU had startup blood. And then he put like his merch, his company's merch on his baby in the ICU oh. and took a photo of it. It was, it wasn't even well, his baby, was it? No, he found, cause his, his baby <laughs> uh, sadly didn't make it, but his, his baby was fine. I'm kidding. But point being that again, this is why people were not super big fans of my humor here. But point being <laughs> that I think that you can aggregate, we have such a large database. We just, yeah. LinkedIn Lunatics, just pull everything off of there. All I made it on there. Yeah. Dude, me too. That was actually yeah. my crown accomplishment is making yeah, me it too. two weeks I, I told my mom, I haven't talked to her in years, but I told her. Told her wow. How did, she, how did she feel? Was she proud? She was very proud. She she was very worried when I dropped out. And so she was very happy that I made it to LinkedIn Lunatics because she oh, knew that I'd Oh, did you actually okay. drop out? Yeah, I dropped out. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Everyone of course. Cool yeah, drops of course, out. Of course. Of course, we're meme lords, you know? Yeah. What are we doing? I do think there is also a baby as a service thing for creators where totally. similar to renting a bald eagle for the clout, you rent a cute baby just for the Twitter clout and just for like the Instagram posts. Yeah. I think then, this could probably be even bigger than bald eagles just slightly. It could appeal to everyone who wants more Instagram likes. Absolutely. And and like we, depending on like what's hot at the time, we price the different like, like ethnicities yes. of babies yes. differently. Yes. Of course. Because there yeah, is like a rank, there's obviously a rank. Yeah, I, we don't need to talk cuteness. about it, but we all know there is. There's a ranking of cuteness in children. Of yeah, course. yeah, and I, I be, agree. White children are very low on the list. Very low, yeah. Very so low. I, I'm i worried that when we have kids, when me and my wife have kids, we're not going to be able to rent them out at a good price. Um, so it's, well, this it's is something why you that have I think to start about the a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. I, every time we're taking a picture, I could just switch it out with a different yes. baby. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And that'll keep people on their toes too. They're like, what baby is Jason going to post this time? And then you can yeah. start a little engagement game with your followers. That's true. That's true. It's also good because you, you build the dopamine lottery, right? You never want your content to always be no. the same. So you need a different raced baby every yeah. single time. Yeah. It's, it's no pretty expect, obvious. Like, no one's how expecting has Kazakhstan coming, coming. Like they do not no. expect it. No, um, no. Or just like a, you know, an Albanian baby. Ooh. They're not expecting that. Never. 100%. Never. No. I mean, maybe some Albanians are expecting it, but like, that's not my primary audience. There's what, like 8 million of them or whatever. Like what? I didn't even know it's a real country. I don't yeah. know. I thought it's they were actually, just albinos. Yeah, me too. For a while. It's far more, you know, what's crazy about Albania 
is they have so much Mediterranean coastline, but they give such yeah. a bad rep. I mean, it's probably from like all the drug lords and cartels yeah. and like the yeah. years and years of like like really high crime rates. But like apparently now it's cleaned up. We should Dude, go apparently see- it's the next Croatia. Dude, we should go in. Do you want to buy a home? And Because by the way, it'll be like $80. Yeah, We true. should just buy like a mansion and start a startup house in Albania. No one's done that yet. Nobody has done that. I would love a, a launch house 2.0 in Albania. <laughs> Watch house two, and then all of our like our security guards are literally just mobs. <laughs> no one's gonna I be put, no one's getting handsy at our house because if they do, <laughs> they're getting thrown in the Mediterranean Ocean. Yeah, I love that. All right, I got another business idea for you here. Mormon sales seminars. You know how Mormons are just really good at going up to strangers, right? You live in New York, then Mormons come up to you to sell you their Mormonism, right? They've for been sure. taught rejection. They've been taught going up to strangers. They've been taught smiling through the pain. That's what every entrepreneur and every salesperson needs. So you have a seminar taught by Mormons on how to do sales. Thoughts? I I legitimately was once on a subway platform and I hit it off with this Mormon guy who was trying to convert me, obviously, to Mormonism. And at the end of it, I was like, what do you do for I was Because we were kind of looking for a salesperson at the time. I was like, what do you do for work? <laughs> Swear to God. I was like, yeah. you're really good. Like, do you, like, are you looking for a job right now? Like, I think I might have one for you. And he's like, he's at, he just dropped out. At, like, he's 19 or whatever. So you could probably get him for cheap. This guy was a goddamn killer. I was actually at a uh, famous startup in our world. I don't want to say. And, sure. um, you know, this guy, like, you know, he, he says he's from Utah. And I look at, you know, my friend and we're just like, that's why he's so good at this. Like, oh, of course. That makes sense. And he had this look in his eyes of just, I hate my life, but I'm going to make a lot of money. And that's should what you we, need in a salesperson, really. Should we convert to Mormonism? Um, No, no. I think we could just, you know, borrow the Mormons. But I, I, I don't think so. I, it confuses me. Well, no, I, that's the whole point. Like, there's yeah. nothing like that will get you to work harder than the existential confusion about everything. That's true. That's true. I do think that'd be fun, um, just for the hell of it. I, I think I'd prefer Scientology, honestly. Like, just to get inside there. That yeah. would be fun. I would. Yeah. I would be very down. I've always wanted. Like, I. I do think that there's something missing. I almost actually thought about writing this. It's like we just start like a religious cult for tech yeah. bros. And I, and I, this is going out of my newsletter tomorrow. Like Paul Graham is already like the religious zealot of the tech world. Yeah. So we just like plant him as the spiritual leader. He's got yeah. the outfit already down. He's got sandals, sure. shorts. I mean, that's some Jesus outfit, bro. Uh, it really is. The, he's the Jesus Christ of tech bros. Yeah. I think founder mode is a religion um, 100% in yes. some circles. For sure. I thought that essay was very bad. I don't know about you. I, you know, I've been. I, well, there was no substance to it. Like, no, there was. It was so bad. <laughs> it was the problem with uh, so much of this stuff is like, it, there's n- like, it, there's no new ideas. Also, founder mode is not exactly like a new concept. Like, we've known that this is a thing for a while. We just didn't call it anything. Yeah. But like, the second Paul Graham like coins a term, everyone's like, we needed this. This was what was missing from our lives. Like, nothing is changing with the, like the new founder mode like uh, uh, you like, think jensen huang is talking about founder mode i don't think so no also i just like when people get to a certain level of rich like i just don't like when i my dream is to obviously if i have billions of dollars like i want to like, charter a vessel into the amazon rainforest and like look at frogs and like like lizards and shit what is everyone doing writing fucking essays on twitter like you did it paul you're a billionaire like go do something else do some that's why I like I'm like fine with Bezos like launching shit into space. I'm like he's got a hobby, but he's got a hobby that makes sense for his level of wealth. Writing essays is something that no one should be doing after college, quite frankly. I don't agree. I love writing. Writing's I, great, dude. I write every day. I think I think but it's fine. You're not going to write once you're rich? I think I'll I'll probably write, but I think the kind of stuff that I write will will I want it to be edgier, Jason. Like Dude. you have an obligation to be able to say the most wild shit possible I agree. and you have a get out of jail free card and we're going middle of the road, like just founder mode. I think we should, we got to just level it up intensity wise. If we're going to be doing yeah. essays, it should be more like Unabomber, like, like manifestos. <laughs> like Unabomber mode. That yes. is, that's it. I love it. Unabomber mode. 
I think oh, Unabomber so... mode would go in tremendously hard. I think so too. And I think there is something to be said about sabotaging other companies. Nobody talks about that. You yes. Know? I wrote you should about be this... sending probably bombs or yeah. you know, at least packages. At least don't send bombs to your competition, but send packages that they think are bombs just to like get them yeah. out of the out, out of the work environment yeah. and screw up their day a little bit. I think yeah. that should be a service, honestly. We should start a service called Hemlock, where we send packages that none of it's actually poison, but it's questionable. But mm. all the goods are like really tasty and like look great, but you're like really you're scared about like you don't want to be the first one to go in and dive in. Yeah. It's like the placebo I, effect of poison. I think it'd be just as easy to send like powder or something and it's just sugar, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, also in, in, planting drugs on your competition's CEO, that should be a service too. I mean, we I, there's a couple thousand dudes in San Francisco that'll do that for about 20 bucks. So, I mean, <laughs> they'll do it for free, dude. Yeah. And plus sure. you can't get arrested for drugs in see in San Francisco. In no. Days. There's it's a get out you have a get out of jail free card. So, it's actually yeah. kind of perfect. It is. All right, startup idea here. AR right. body count glasses. You put on glasses, you could see a girl's body count. And option two, if it is a scary looking guy, you click on the mode and you can see how many people they've killed. So their body count. So it works both ways. Wow. You can, you, again, this will corner the, you, you got a lot of people that would use this in, uh, you know, Eastern Europe for sure. But body count counter is interesting. You're going to run into some, there's uh, the good, I mean, good and bad. There's going to be a lot of free press. Good. You'll probably <laughs> sell a lot in like the South and Texas. But that's probably enough. It's like the my pillow guy or whatever. Like you yeah. don't need to everyone to be your friend. In fact, it's probably good to make some enemies. If you're just here to make some money, it's not a bad idea. Well, that's all I'm here for. So it makes sense. I also think similarly, while we're talking about election stuff, but AR glasses and it shows you who they voted for in their entire history would be nice. That would be fun at Christmas. <laughs> like everyone, everyone under the tree gets one. And then like Uncle Mark, who you think is a big Kamala guy, like he's voted for Trump yeah. three times in a row. Yeah. Yeah. He just like even it. last election. Dude, he, he voted for Trump. RFK, man. Like, yeah. you know, but just totally keeps it on the low. You know, everybody has that uncle that just totally lies about it. Okay. I got one that I'm really excited to tell you about. I think this is maybe my best yet. Yacht clubs, but for Tesla owners. Hear me out, okay? Social communities, people are dying of loneliness in this country. We know this to be a fact. And so we, but we need, and there's like this lack of like, like elite social club that people can join. Now to the Tesla people, they're going to think that this is like, a, this is the best thing that God has ever created. They only get to be around other people who are part of this, the Elon supremacy circle. We have a dress code. It's just like black t-shirts and cargo shorts and like, so like all birds or whatever, but the flip side is that who's really going to encourage everyone to, to join this is non-Tesla owners because they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, guys, go join that club. So all the Tesla people think it's great. But then on the other flip side, everyone else is like, we don't have to fucking spend any time with these dorks anymore. <laughs> and so you appeal to everyone. Everyone's going to be like getting them, buying people memberships. Like if you have a friend that you like, he's on the outs of your friend group, you don't have to just get rid of him. Just buy him a year membership to the Tesla club. And then they'll just go there and leave you alone and create their own like ecosystem of incel dorks. I like it. I like it a lot. I actually had this tweet lined up, which is Twitter is basically anti-social media where the more you use it, the less people want to hang out with you who aren't on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like the more I use it, the less all the normies relate to me and it no longer makes sense to them, which is yeah. okay. Yeah, which is fine. It's Twitter's hard to break into, man. I'm like, dude. There's I, a lot of hidden circles and meanings, and a lot of you know languaging around Twitter. That's yeah. really interesting. I, I was like, actually talking with uh, you know, Chris Backey. You probably yeah, seen him yeah. around. We were talking yesterday about uh, a dumb startup idea, which is um, uh, basically like you know when you're you're seeing founders like tweet a lot, and then it stops, and then they start again, and the voice is different. So they're yeah. using a ghostwriter, right? Like there should be a service that alerts you <laughs> when right. somebody uses a ghost or because you have to be like very terminally online to be able to tell because you're seeing their content all the time. Right. For but sure. it'd be nice to know, oh, they just fired their ghostwriter. If I was a ghostwriter, boom, I know who to go to. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. You could all the ghostwriting agencies, like with the Charlies of the world, whatever the guy, 
from yeah, he yeah. Said, work week or something. I forget what, what he's doing now, but we go target them specifically there. They, this could be a huge revenue generator for them. But also the fun thing is that like when you realize that you like you hated that person, but you love their ghostwriter. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can have a service that also like tell you who the ghostwriter is. So then you can just go follow them instead. Because you're like, yes. I love this founder's tweets. Before I hated him. Now I love him. I really love the, the man behind the camera. So then yes. this just boosts your follower count, Jason. So it's really just a back door to get the ghostwriters fame. So they become the influencers. And they probably should be anyway, because they're doing the work yeah. and writing cool stuff. That's that's the plan. I also have an idea for a book or movie while we're on this topic about nice. a ghostwriter who like starts pretending to be his client. And, you know, just like very obsessively and like creepily. And he, he, you know, just totally delusionally start thinking he's the client. And then eventually, yeah. obviously, like kills the client and just like totally. Like know, wears becomes, his skin. Buffalo yeah, it's like him, the ghostwriter, sure. like total creep. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think it'd be I think it'd be really good. <laughs> this is the modern thriller that we need. It is. It is. Everyone, I think, yeah. Is everyone going to have a ghostwriter within the next five years? I think every big creator and founder for the most part, yes, to some degree. And I think it's it's not even about writing necessarily. It's about scaling their time. Like my best ghostwriting clients are the ones who have grown to like 3K, 4K, 5K followers, and then they just don't have time. Like they're, yes. they're great writers. They're better writers. Like they have all the ideas. They just don't have time anymore. Yes. Um, so I think like every CEO already does, like every fortune 500 does like every, so many startups do like it's how I made a living for the last three years. So yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think so. And like, um, especially creators as well, like a YouTuber or something like all of them just have, yeah. you know, ghostwriters put out their shit for them. I mean, so, yeah. I hired a guy to do my Instagram for me because I'm like, I can't yeah. write the newsletter, consult with yeah. my clients and do LinkedIn. And like, I'm not, I can't. Does he just post things. like nudes of you or, or what? Like, just Yeah, like, I send him a picture of my butthole every morning and then he like yeah. photoshops it into like specific and then puts like, nice. like you know, a big X to plug over it or something. And I should try that with my editor. I hope, yeah, Jovian, get ready. I'm about to send I, you some pics. I love this. If he's good, let me know because I, I, I'm, I'm in the market That's for, true. for sure. All right, startup idea here. Uh, Zillow ghost detection service. So uh, basically a Google Chrome extension that shows on Zillow whether a house uh, has been reported to have ghosts in it. So you know, oh, this house looks really cheap. It's because it was, you know, probably haunted. Right. And we and to distribute it, we find everyone that's got astrology symbols in their Instagram bio and everyone that sells crystals on the side for one of the big crystal companies. And we just yes. slide into their DMs and market this service for them. Yeah, because the good news with them is they actually also have money because they're scamming people, and yeah. so they they're one of the few markets of people that can afford to buy homes because they're selling fake things anyway, which is Dude, basically the way you make money in America. My life got so much better when I stopped dating girls who are into astrology and crystals. Like my For level sure. of happiness just improved. Well, I'm I'm a Gemini male, which is apparently like the what lowest. What does that rate. mean, dude? So that's a, I I know, but someone I literally had a girl once send me like a list of all of them, and at the very bottom of the list was Gemini. Did you just send her the meme like I'm not reading all that? Happy for you, bro. No, I did because here's the other thing about me is I actually am like not good at meme. Like you're the meme. I need meme alerts because I never was. I never had a social media until like I started all this bullshit, right? Like I, <laughs> so I've like never had an Instagram, never had yeah, yeah. Facebook. Like didn't really use like Twitter for other than, other than like posting crypto shit when I ran a crypto and then I had LinkedIn. So I knew nothing about memes and online culture. The only good thing is my identical twin is like a literally good dank meme lord and just has like a, a meme bank. He, he was the original. He had a meme bank that he sent me before I found yours, which nice. is like modern, updated and focused on tech. Dude, it's just getting started, bro. Meme alerts. I'm, I got to show you. Uh, I'm, I'm building a whole software for it. Like it's about to be cracked. Like right now it's it's good. And the service is good, but it's about to go next level. I'm only doing this podcast to get in with you before you're super. Like, if you buy a yacht off of Meme Alerts, like, please just like let SS me get, like, get me get on that. SS, SS Meme Lord. Lord. SS Meme Lord. I think that'd be nice. That that would go super hard. I think so too. I was talking to my wife about we should name our kid Elon because like Elon Levin actually sounds kind of fire. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Are you a big Musk fan or what's your? I what's mean, your yeah, story? yeah, definitely. I think he's he's the goat. Um, but I do think Elon Levin just like pretty good name. 
in general. Elon Levin's a great name. I've always wanted to name my, my kid something stupid, like Slater or something. Sl- Wait, want- Slater? That's my wife's maiden name. Really? That's actually, yeah, yeah. I, it's a great name. Why did she t- – she shouldn't have changed. I'm I sorry, know. I, I consider changing so, it. I know. Slater goes so hard. Like I just Dude. like a deep, raspy voice. I'm Slater. Slater. Yo, Slater would be a good startup name. Like, But I guess it would have to be like related to selling slates or something. Something like that. I don't know. All right, more startup ideas. What you got yeah. for me? All right, all right. This is one that I've, I've, me and my buddy Ben, drunkenly have yelled about in many New York bars throughout the years. Couches. Let me paint you a picture. You're out with your friends. It's two in the morning. You've been standing all night. You're about like eleven tequila sodas in. All you want to do is talk about the latest Elon tweet, but you want to do it from a couch. Now you go on Google Maps, Maps, and you try typing in couches. You go on Yelp. Where is the closest couch? There's nothing. You can't find a single fucking couch. We give you for a premium subscription all the best locations with couches at every point in the day. So you never have to stand again. And in fact, our slogan is we won't stand for this. That's the slogan. And hear me out. Market tan, 100%. Everyone sits. Everyone loves couches. They're all genders of people. like And dogs. Dude, animals too. Dude, animals love couches. And we can – what couches are animal friendly? Yes, I love it. Couch locator would be so nice, dude. That's I, even better than bathroom locator because you could go bathroom on a couch. and it would just For sure. Out. That's what the yeah. cushions are for. You just lift them up and hide. <laughs> dude, <laughs> uh, I, I think that's a great idea. And there would also be a secondhand business there where – uh, you could find money that gets like lost in the couch and AirPods and stuff, right? Like there'll oh, be yeah. a sub economy of couches of people like, you know, going to these couches. So what we got to do is like build up the couch propaganda uh, and we yeah. could have JD Vance help out with that. I'm sure he'd be down. Like, he oh, loves he's, be, he's the official mascot and sp- sponsor. He, of he couches. loves couches. Yo, we should go metal detecting in Central Park, bro. Did you know it's illegal to go metal detecting in Central Park? Really? Is that bullshit? I feel like there's so much hidden treasure there. The amount of like weapons and just like like rusty, bloody like nails and hatchets yeah. that you'll find there. I, like, I don't know. There might be some valuables too. Like Oh, there will be valuables. You'll pull I up mean, an AP out of that fucking lake. You know, RFK, he left a bear there. So there's got to be some like treasures of some sort. That's maybe my favorite thing he's ever said. Like that, it's crazy how bad he is at PR. Like it just gets worse and I worse. It's but I kind of love him. Yeah. I got to be honest. Have you seen the video of him where he's like, I, these are my ravens. I Like he's got the rate. Have you seen this video? He has ravens? No, I he haven't has, seen this video. He's befriended ravens. Oh, this incredible. was like this. It's amazing. He, he's always like catching a snake or something. But this was like he's in a suit on his balcony. And he's like, these ravens live over here. It's, it's a husband and wife. They, they're a pair. He's, he's just, and he's like literally he's naming them he's like i've been training them every day it's yeah. my favorite video you do a good of voice of it it's, it's i try good. i, I love try. how his wife is like you know was married to larry david in the show and then yes. actually somehow got a weirder husband than larry david unbelievable consistency yeah. there yeah 100 it's he's it's maybe the weirdest co- it is a kennedy in fairness she did she did nail a kennedy he's a good looking dude he's jacked he i mean is jacked. he's he's definitely weird but he probably fucks, you know. Dude, if he didn't have the voice, I really think he would have had a better political shot. I mean, obviously, I think so too. Although his some of his beliefs are a little out there. Oh, you um, think really? I, I don't just, know what you're talking about. Yeah, just slightly. <laughs> I but only voice... follow him for animal facts. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> That's the only I thing him, I care. I follow him just for his animal rights beliefs. Like, yes, I want RFK to run PETA. I think would be the next logical step. Throw him in top of the EPA. I think he might actually – that might be the one place he'd be great at. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of Jehovah's Witness as a service? So you have like an enemy and you uh-huh. send a Jehovah's Witness to their house every day to knock on the door and try to convert them. I I mean I love fucking with my enemies. Sure. So I think it would be really good. I think it's great. The good news is there's a lot of – you can do like – you can get cut code knife salesmen. You can get – you Dude, don't you I don't almost have to... became a cut code knife salesman. Did you know I've... that? No, I did not know that. I have a couple friends who made bank selling yeah. Cutco knives. I was like very tempted. And then I was like, this is like kind of screwed up. And why am I selling knives? Like, but I think I probably would have made some good money doing it. Yeah. My buddy made like 
they were making like seventy thousand dollars a year as in high school, right? Or yeah. college summers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it was literally college summers. And then the best part about it is Cutco is run like a cult. And yes. so they would elevate you. They'd be like, you're in the top 200 of all Cutco salesmen. So they'd bring you into offices, fly you out to conferences. And my yeah. friends would just get like fucked up and then hook up with all the other reps because everyone thought they were like cool hot shots. They're like, yeah, John's coming in here. He's the fucking man. And John he sold Watson. six knives today. Yeah, no, like legitimately they're like six grand and you make 50% commission, which is the crazy yeah. thing. Yeah. I kind of regret, you know, it's not too late, honestly. You could, I mean, in fairness, either one of our careers could just like tank tomorrow with anything that we put on the internet. I mean, the second this podcast goes out, it, it you never know. Yeah, really. no, I mean. I mean, my... I pl I've been planning that, you know, for a long time. It's, it's yeah. just like, dude, I think this is actually something that I talk and think a lot about is like by embracing canceling and like canceling yourself like we do, it makes sure. you cancel proof, right? I agree. Like, yeah, like the more cancelable I personally am, the more like unhinged I could be. And that's part of my brand. The same way with it, it is for you. People hire us for our unhinged cancelable shit. Yes. So it works out. Well, you just can't, you have to always double down. Like that's, yes. the, that's the thing I realized very early on is like I made a rule the second I went viral, which was like, I'm always going to play into it because lots of people are going to hate me. And still to this day, like I put out one yesterday that was, uh, I put out a post that was announcing that I invested in five dudes to build a girls club. And this was like a real headline is these dudes like pivoted their like shitty app. These two like Aussie or New Zealand, five Aussie or New Zealand white guys pivoted their app to create like a social club for girls in New York city. Oh, that and, is like, the horniest Australia shit I've ever heard. Yeah. And and so I did smart, a post. Honestly smart. It's a really Dude, good we idea. We should start that. Yo, it's when I was in college, I really wanted to start a bikini calendar to mm -hmm. have like, I could have gotten sponsored by each club, each sorority, right? Yeah. I think I would have made some serious bread and got some head. And it, listen, it's sex positive. We're in an era yeah, where you're yeah, like 100%. being an only. There could be guys. Like there could be guys. Yeah. It's, oh, it's awesome. for sure. Yeah. I think we have a, we got a mix for absolutely. I mean, this is this, at this point we can have every group of representation. Yeah. In the yeah. Media. I'm not. I'm not being like uh, you know. Uh, exclusionary here i'm everybody everybody can be on my calendar yeah. i might not show up for those photo shoots per se right um but i think they could be on the calendar i think that's fine no i do think that you have to get super ripped if you want to do this though i you think you gotta dude, get an eight pack yeah let's put chamath let's put pavel the founder of telegram yep. shirtless in the desert i want that on the calendar and let's just yeah. throw one that's for fun and just read Hoffman thrown in the myths. Like he's like october yeah. or something exactly he, he tells you you know don't look like me it works out. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it works works pretty well. It sure does. I do yeah. think we're getting uncancelable though, which is real nice. That's the goal, got, brother. That is the really, goal. It is. It is. It is absolutely the goal. The goal. And as more time goes on, and you just put out more stuff, and yeah. your reputation just becomes the person who will say anything, and that's a good place to be. It is, dude. There's something called jester's privilege, which is, you know, yes. the privilege you have as a jester is people don't take you seriously, which is a good thing. It means yes. you could say anything like, you know, I write about this in my book, but like 500 years ago, right? If you were the jester making fun of the king, like you're the only one allowed to make fun of the king. Yeah, Nobody else can, right? And so when yes. something crazy happens in our world, we can make fun of it. But other people who are known to be serious can't like attack it, right? I but always like, said that if I was at any figure in history, I'd be a jester, but I'd be the jester who's like behind the scenes, like become doing like merchant deals and shit and like scheming the political, <laughs> political court. Cause yeah, like yeah. I'm such a, a schemer by, and this is another lens. I had, I, I had a podcast with a buddy that was just called schemology. And it nice. was just, we like looked at the world through the lens of a schemer. He was a college dropout from like yeah. Philly who just became a software engineer and worked at the New York times, like straight out of nice. college. And I was just like, perfect just we got engineer schemer and we've got like crypto college dropout jabroni schemer and like together join for forces we can just create the best media empire on the planet but i like there's it is the world is completely binary it's schemer versus non-schemer you're like obviously like a mega schemer i'm the schemer and dreamer baby schemes and uh, dreams for that's sure. all it is at the end of the day is schemes and dreams i think more people should be schemers i i really do do think that scheme capital would be pretty nice um, happy it would be sick. It would be oh. nice. That was the second. That was like legitimately second choice behind Jabroni Capital was Scheme yeah. Capital. I love Jabroni Capital. 
Um, Jack, we're, we're wrapping up time. Where can people find you, man? Where can people find Jabroni Capital? Uh, JabroniCapital.com to subscribe to our newsletter. It's uh, the most unhinged newsletter in tech. We say the most wild things we can twice a week, <laughs> Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, next issue is going out tomorrow. Um, and then just Jack Kuvek on all social media. That's, that's how you get me. All right. All right, dude. This was a pleasure. Uh, we should uh, chop it up soon. I would love to. Thanks for having me, my man.